Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Muqtada al Sadr's party improves tally in Iraqi elections. Activists question Columbus Day celebrations. Over 100 Jewish settlers storm Al Aqsa Mosque. Chilean movements condemn death of militant following police repression. In our first story, we take a look at Iraq. On Monday, the Independent High Electoral Commission on Iraq announced the preliminary results of the parliamentary elections held a day before. The Sadrist movement, a party of the Sairun Alliance, led by religious leader Muqtada al-Sadr, emerged as the biggest winner along with independence as expected. The coalition is expected to win at least 75 seats out of 329 in the parliament, improving its tally of 54. The IHEC said the results are preliminary because it has to address voter-related complaints before declaring the final results. The Sunni bloc Takadum has 37 seats and is placed second after Cyril. Former Prime Minister and leader of the Dawa party, Nuri al-Maliki, led the State of Law Alliance, came third with 34 seats. In the northern part of Iraq, Kurdish Democratic Party, or the KDP, is projected to win 32 seats, seven more from the last election. Muqtada al-Sadr, following the initial results, gave a televised speech where he emphasized that his movement will work to eradicate corruption. This year's elections were advanced due to popular protests ongoing since October 2019, with major changes in the country's electoral system under the new electoral law. The abolition of party lists now allows independent candidates to contest the elections, unlike in the past. Despite the changes introduced, Sunday's vote saw a historically low voter turnout at 41%. It is reported that most of the young voters who had participated in the protest boycotted the elections. The Iraqi Communist Party, which was part of the Sairun alliance in the last elections, had supported the call for the boycott. As the United States celebrates the first official Indigenous Peoples' Day, Indigenous activists are demanding that it officially replace Columbus Day as a federal holiday. President Joe Biden had issued a proclamation on Friday, October 8th, to observe Indigenous Peoples' Day alongside the annual Columbus Day celebration on the second Monday of October. Even though the proclamation acknowledged the historical violence and the discrimination inflicted on indigenous groups, many activists have found it to be falling short. Biden had emphasized that the Columbus Day celebrations will continue to be a federal holiday and also stated that state and local governments are not required to observe Indigenous Peoples Day if they choose not to. Columbus Day commemorates the landing of Spanish colonial conquest led by Italian voyager Christopher Columbus to the Americas on October 12, 1492. The day has been observed by the federal government since 1934 and became a federal holiday since 1971. The immediate advent of the first voyage by Columbus was large-scale colonization of the Americas inhabited by indigenous communities, brutal massacres, and pillaging by Spanish forces and was followed by the advent of other colonial powers and also foreign diseases from Europe. Indigenous groups have argued that Columbus Day not only ignores but also seeks pride from the more than five centuries of ongoing colonization of European settlers and their descendants. In our next story, we take a look at dozens of extremist Israeli settlers storming the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in East Jerusalem in the occupied West Bank on Monday under police protection. The Jewish settlers reportedly recited Talmudic Jewish prayers while walking all around the mosque compound, according to the Waqf Authority. Later in the day, a group of people from the United Arab Emirates, or the UAE, also broke into the compound as part of a normalization tour following the UAE-Israel Normalization Agreement last year, also known as the Abraham Accords. During both these incidents, the Israeli police forcibly evacuated the Palestinian worshippers from the compound. The raids on Monday followed a similar such raid over the weekend, Settler invasions into the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound have been increasingly frequent over the years as Israel tries to assert control over the area by increasing Jewish presence and visits. 
extremists and fanatical religious Jews have regularly demanded the total demolition of the mosque. In our final story, we take a look at Chile, where several political and social leaders have expressed their outrage over the death of indigenous human rights activist Denise Cortes. 43-year-old Cortes died on October 10th after the officials of National Police Force, the Carabineros, brutally repressed a peaceful march by Mapuche indigenous people in the capital, Santiago. On Sunday, over a thousand indigenous men and women took to the streets in defense of the resistance and autonomy of the indigenous people. The protesters gathered at the Dignity Square and began marching through the Alameda Avenue with the aim to reach Huelian Hill in the center of Santiago. However, on their way, they were brutally repressed with water cannons and tear gas bombs. According to various reports, at least 12 people were arrested and 20 were injured after the repression. Cortez was among the seriously injured people and she died within a few hours in a nearby hospital. Cortez was a law student and a member of the NGO Defensoria Popular or People's Ombudsman Office. The protesters reported that she was hit in the neck by a tear gas canister fired by the police agents, while the police said a firework launched by the protesters was the reason. The legislator of the Communist Party, Camila Vallejo, blamed the Carabineros for Cortez's unjust death, highlighting that the security forces has a long history of brutality. That's all for today's episode. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel, visit our website on www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.